Hello. I got a couple of logs here that we're going to cut into bowl blanks. Or I'm going to cut one of them into bowl blanks. At the moment. I've got this uh, blank that I just bandsawed into a circle, the center point that I used for my compass to lay out the circle is still there and I will use that to seat my drive center so I can mount it between centers. I'm just using a standard spur center here and I'll use a mallet to seat that so that the spurs get a good grip. Doing it that way also seats it enough so that it will stay on there when you tip the blank up on edge. Okay, I've uh, always had a problem when I'm putting a blank on between centers and then I seat the, uh, the tail center against the face of the outside. Um, the center point of the drive center makes a fairly deep uh, dimple and then if you're trying to get it balanced and you're trying to move that just a little bit that point wants to go back into the hole that was already there so Robbie the Wood uh, was doing one, a video on YouTube and uh, he was saying he takes the center spur out of his drive center or center point out of his drive center and just uses the ring and that was kind of like a, well why didn't I think of that that's a real good idea so because of the drive ring you can move it just a little bit and overlap on a place where it already was and it'll seat just fine. So, uh, thanks Robbie. That, uh, 
helps quite a bit. So now I can lift that and slip the Morse taper into the headstock spindle. And then just kind of hold it there. Well, I bring the, uh, the tailstock up. So, this lathe, it's a Nova DVR. Uh, it's a direct drive lathe. It doesn't have uh, any belts or anything to cause any drag. So the headstock is free, free wheeling. And if there's a heavy spot on the blank, it'll go to the bottom. Uh, I've never tried this on a belt drive lathe, so I don't know whether they are free spinning enough to do that. I suppose you could release the belt tension and it would work. So I know that the heavy spot is down here, so I'll tilt that a little bit and see how that goes. Okay, so it's still settling down there, so I'll move it just a little more. And that's balanced pretty good. Um, now since that's so well balanced, I can probably start turning it, even though it is a, quite a heavy piece, I can probably start turning that uh, at higher than the minimum speed of the lathe anyway. Um, I'm actually going to start it up at 300 and see how it runs. And that's running fine at 300. So I will pop it up to 500 and see how that goes. And 500 seems to be alright as well, so I'll go with that. Set my tool rest up. At about 45 degrees across this corner. At about 45 degrees across the corner, and I'm going to start working this corner down first. Um, there's a couple of advantages to that. Uh, because I'm working such a, a short distance, it doesn't take me long to get down to where I'm cutting on a true surface and as I cut as my cut gets deeper and I keep working deeper in that true surface gets extended further up the side wall of the bowl and further in towards the base as well uh, setting if I set my tool rest up parallel to the edge here and start trying to cut there that is going to really be bouncy, probably anyway, depending on how accurate the circle is and how well centered it is. Uh, but in most cases, that's going to be really bouncy, and it's going to take a while to get down. It's hard on me. It's hard on the the mountings, and uh, it's just I find it much easier to start working the corner first.
and this corner that's where the most wood has to come off so I might as well start right out concentrating on that area now because I'm working just the corner it doesn't take long for a gap to open up here so I stop after every three or four passes and move the tool rest in and you notice that I'm cutting over here or standing over here this is pretty wet wood there'll be water coming off of it um, or sap or whatever you want to call it uh, moisture anyway and if I'm standing over here doing that pull cut I'm right in the line of fire of the water if it ever should come off the lathe I'm right in the line of fire of the, the blank coming off the lathe um, it's much easier to stand over here I'm not getting the water thrown on my in my face and on my face shield soaking my smock uh, the shaving is being directed away from me and if it does come off the lathe I'm probably not going to get probably not guaranteed in any way shape or form I'm probably not going to get nailed directly it would be more likely to be a glancing blow um, I should point out that even though I'm standing over here that is st I'm still doing a pull what would be called a pull cut because the handle of the gouge is ahead of the cutting edge that's that's to me that's what defines a pull cut if the handles behind the cutting edge then I'm doing a push cut so even though I'm standing back here and pushing the gouge the handle is leading so it's a pull cut Okay, so now I'm going to level this face. Okay, I am going to be coring uh, a bowl out of the middle of this one, so I want a pretty substantial tenon. Uh, coring does put a lot of stress on the tenon, as well as the lathe and the lathe operator. But uh, So I'm going to go with a 4 inch tenon, which would be about there. Now because I've removed wood off of this face, I've got this stub in the middle of the tenon. That may uh, or probably would interfere with that seating into the chuck jaws properly. So I am actually going to remove that stub before I do the final cuts on the tenon. Because in order to remove that, I'm going to turn the diameter of it down and then stop the lathe, take the bowl off the lathe, cut that tenon off, or cut that stub off, and then remount it. And it's 
highly unlikely that I will get it exactly back on the same turning axis that it is right now. So, if I make this, if I cut the tenon on the axis it is right now, and then put it back on and it's running on a slightly different axis, then the tenon won't be true to the the shape of the bowl. So I'm going to uh, reduce the size of that then take this off and cut that off. Okay, so that's that uh, stub is is actually face grain so it'll split off of there quite easily I don't want to take it too small before I uh, get rid of it but I want it uh, I want to get it down near the same diameter as the, uh, the tail center ring uh, so that when I go to put it back on when I cut that off, I'll leave a little ridge showing where it was, and uh, then I'll just try and get the tail center centered on that little uh, ring that will be there. I'll just knock it off with a bench chisel. Okay, and uh, I'm just trying to get about the same amount of that circle showing all the way around. That's pretty close. I'm unlikely to ever get it exact, but since I'm going to be doing the rest of my cutting in relation to this center, it doesn't really matter whether I get it exact. The closer the better, but exact doesn't really isn't a requirement.